Hi, and welcome to another edition of App Marketing Conversations. I am Ryan Morrell with GameHouse. As always, I'm here with Ian Sefman of Mobile Dev HQ. Roby Ganguly of AppTentive. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. <laughs> A little tired? <laughs> Very tired. <laughs> and I don't even have kids, so yeah, I well, no I, I got more sleep than you did last night, yeah. but from the sounds of it. Um, it's what earplugs do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this week we're talking about the, the, the new iPhone and, and new iOS uh, shock. Uh, we actually did this last week, but had some technical difficulties, so here we are again. Um, so in Roby's segment, we talked a little bit about uh, the iPhone 5C and the iPhone 5S. In Ian's, we're talking about the, the new iOS 7 features and how it affects ranking, etc. cetera. Um, but here we're going to talk a little bit about the, the new M7 chip um, and, and how app marketers and app developers can integrate that into their apps for, for potentially more engaging experiences. So for those of you who don't know, the M7 chip is... Um, essentially a background process, back, a, a chip that runs in the background collecting data information about your movement as well as your location. Um, and, the, and one of the interesting things that they've done in the architecture of this is it runs constantly without draining power and actually talking to the A7 processor. So um, you're, every time you move, you're not draining ba battery, right? Is, is it relative movement, meaning like it's not, so it's not coordinated to where you are in the world, it's just sort of like you it move is. 10 feet. Oh, it is? It is both. Interesting. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's on the verge of making things like this, Fitbits, <laughs> and kind of any other motion tracking phenomena are totally obsolete, um, other than the fact that this is a whole lot smaller and more convenient to carry than a phone. Uh, and there's some interesting use cases, especially the one that Roby and I talked about last week a little bit was, if you're driving somewhere, and you're getting directions, you get out of your car and you start walking, your directions change. Because it now, now knows you're walking, mm -hmm. which, which is pretty interesting. Um, so, I mean, I think ge generally the question is, um, what types of new content and what types of new marketing do, does this open up for, for developers and marketers? That's the, the first set. And, and B, um, do, does this change the way people use their devices and think about their phones in general? So, you know, I think that the, the latter question is the important place to start for a marketer. Like, what's going to change about how consumers are thinking, behaving, what they expect out of this technology that you can capitalize on? And the, the biggest thing that might come out of this is that wearable technology becomes very common very quickly for a class of consumer, and they just expect things to understand where they are. So they expect the gas station to sort of know that they're there and, and show a push, right? Or they expect to be able to go um, from walking to driving to on the bus and, and have their phone figure that out. And apps that integrate with their travel that don't understand that are going to feel old, right? They're going to feel behind. So I think the opportunity for marketers is to think that if, especially if you're around the location, if you're trying to be contextually aware, if you're not, pushing forward on understanding this, you're, you're going to miss a whole class of consumers. Yeah. What do you think? I, I think that's right. I, I think one of the things that mobile has done is mobile has integrated the world into digital. The physical world into digital. And if you're not thinking about it in that way, you're, you're totally missing out, which is exactly what you said. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you think this also starts to lead to some consolidation on in terms of the number of developers who can be successful, right? Because we get more and more technically advanced uh, and, and the resources required, because con contextual awareness is hard, right? Not only from just a programming perspective, but also from an acquiring data perspective. Like, can new two-person startups <laughs> do something and compete with big guys like Foursquare? So I, I think always, right? I, one of like one of the truisms of, of technology over the years has been that the people who are who are truly disruptive are the people that you least expect it is never it is never the incumbents um, and more more interesting technology that allows people to build on top of it but just allows more two people in their garage to go out and, and build the, the most amazing things yeah yeah okay um, so, I know, so I know you guys aren't as games focused as I am but um, how can you see this new M7 chip and the related services being integrated into games. We'll start with Roby because you just went. Well, I think that the, um, 
the obvious one is introducing some more of these augmented reality situations. Like we talked a couple months ago about a marketing campaign that I believe Frito-Lay ran that was in conjunction with a games company and there was augmented reality opportunities inside of a store, like a scavenger hunt. So if you kind of are getting a bunch of data about where people are and you have an interesting database of how that maps to like where they are in the world, you might start to be layering in augmented reality challenges to your game for a variety of reasons. Like maybe you are trying to establish an offline presence or maybe you're working with a brand. So that could be an interesting place to go. Yeah. There's also been, uh, there's also been some examples of people who have done like uh, MMORPGs that are sort of pseudo, pseudo real life type things mm -hmm. uh, that this obviously makes a lot cooler. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's, it sounds like you could do some really, some really interesting things around, around location and building up an RPG type game and things like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, a, we've been waiting for five years for the, for location based gaming to be interesting uh, yeah. at like scale. Um, and so I wonder if this is maybe starting to, to move yeah. down that path. Um, okay. Uh, anything else you guys want to add here? More interesting than I first thought. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think consumer expectation, expectations around um, wearable technology are changing a lot faster than I would have I would have guessed two years ago even, right? and this is going to accelerate it. So yeah. Well, and one of the well, I have one other point here is I think the interesting thing is have that, that's happening and kind of further uh, makes Apple's ecosystem stronger. They kind of just take this tech that's pretty interesting and, and give it out to developers and say, yeah. build my ecosystem. Yeah, build. <laughs> right? Yeah. Go forth and bring in customers for me. And <clears throat> it's really interesting, right? <laughs> it is, and, and that's, a, quite frankly, that's like that's an amazing way to deal with the innovator's dilemma. Yeah, right? Yeah. Where if Apple has this technology, maybe themselves, they're like, I don't I don't actually know what to do with it, but they're, but they're kind of like, well, I don't really know what to do with it, but I'm sure two guys in their garage will know what to do yeah. with it, and they'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. Okay. Um, thanks very much, guys. Get some sleep. Um, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and make sure to check out the other segments. So I, th I think it opens up, I think it opens up the world to tweens. Um, and I think it also potentially opens up the world to a different segment of like 60 plus year old women as well. Uh, and so as, as, a, as a marketer,